Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Beliefs of Islam with me, Hassan Hadi. In today's episode, we will talk about the problem of Wahdat al Wujud, a distortion of Allah's exalted nature. In the previous episode of the Beliefs of Islam, we began to elucidate and elaborate upon the varying ways in which the nation of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all, had in several lines of ideology deviated from the path. We mentioned that numerous different forms of deviation had even crept into the very popular understandings of God's nature, the very doctrine which the Holy Prophet, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, his pure family, had come to establish as the pillar of a human society, would come to be overturned in the modern world by the philosophical speculations and mystical rumblings of a few misguided souls. This is hardly surprising for certainly a nation which deviated away from the leadership of al Muhammad and as we shall see in further detail while alluding towards other issues of belief, began to distort the original meaning of the Book of Allah, could and would certainly deviate in, in regards to a key point such as its doctrine of God's nature. Now one of the key proponents of the doctrine of Wahdat al-Wujud or the unity of existence who has found his name among some students of the Hausa today is the personality known as Ibn Arabi, a renowned Sufi who claimed several rights for himself, including the claim that he was the seal of the saints of God. Claims obviously disputed by the Ahlul Bayt, for whom Imam Al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, is the seal. In the previous episode, we elaborated upon the narration of Sufism according to the Ahlul Bayt, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all, and cited their narrations in regards to such a group. However, today allow us to quote about some of the sayings of Ibn Arabi to give us insights into his way of thinking and how he has successfully deviated some of this great Ummah with his mystical deviation in regards to Tawheed. Now I do warn you dear viewers that the following quote is particularly explicit and we by no means endorse what is being said in the following citation. Ibn Arabi states in his book, When man witnesses Allah in woman, his witnessing is in the passive. When he witnesses him in himself regarding the appearance of women from him, he witnesses him in the active. When he witnesses him from himself without the presence of any form from him, his witnessing is in the passive directly from Allah without any intermediary. So his witnessing of Allah in the women is the most complete and perfect because he witnesses Allah in as much as he is both active and passive. Regarding himself, he is passive in particular. For this reason, the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant his peace, loved women because of the perfection of the witnessing of Allah in them, since one does not ever witness Allah free of matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his essence is independent of the worlds, so from this aspect the business is impossible, yet witnessing only occurs in matter. The witnessing of Allah in women is the greatest and most perfect witnessing. The Greatest Union is Marriage, page 128 of Fusus al-Hikam by Ibn Arabi, chapter 27, the seal of the unique wisdom in the world of Muhammad. God is far exalted beyond such a statement of deviation. Dear viewers, our style, our methodology and our manners do not allow us to describe the implications of such claims in an elaborate manner, for certainly no form of negative description could encompass just how distorted a worldly view such a statement offers to the Ummah. Yet we shall be exploring this distortion of Tawheed further and we shall expose just how confused such a belief is and why we must repudiate it and reject it, not only due to our religious foundations but also upon rational grounds in further episodes. For today it shall suffice us to end with but one statement from the House of Revelation, al Muhammad, themselves who have stated about such thoughts. It's been narrated in Al-Kafi from Imam Sadiq who has said the following. The words of Allah, the Majestic, the Glorious, that say, and that the final end is unto thy Lord. That was in the Holy Book, Al-Quran, chapter 53, verse 42. This verse instructs people to end a discussion that would take up Allah's self as an object of investigation. This was for today, until we meet next episode. Thank you very much indeed, and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.